Hello, Pastor Doug, back again with another video. Today, I want to answer the question as briefly as possible, what is to kingdoms theology? This, this theological construct we read throughout the history of the church called the two kingdoms. Now, it's actually a complicated answer because Augustine, Luther, Calvin, later Calvinists give all subtle different definitions. But I think the best simple direct definition comes from the Lutheran tradition, and it's from their Augsburg Confession, their famous statement of faith. I think this also represents a lot of reform thinking, though there are some reform people who would want the church to be more aggressive in society. But since I want to keep this video short, let me just simply read it to you. So the Augsburg Confession, it reads, This power of the keys or of the bishops is used and exercised only by teaching and preaching of the word of God and by the administration of the sacraments to many persons or to individuals depending on one's calling. In this way are imparted no bodily but eternal things and gifts, namely external righteousness, the Holy Spirit, and eternal life. So this is about the power of the keys, the power the church has. And the church and the church alone can give this gift of life through the ministry of the word, this eternal righteousness, salvation, the Holy Spirit, and eternal life. These gifts cannot be attained except through the office of preaching and the administration of the holy sacraments. For as St. Paul says, the gospel is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith. Romans chapter 1. So this again states the main purpose of the church and the power and the great power the church has. Keep on going. In so much as the power of the church or the bishop bishops bestows eternal gifts and is used and ex exercised only through the office of preaching, it does not interfere at all with government or temporal authority. Now there's the two kingdoms. The preaching of the gospel does not interfere with how the government runs. Keep on going. Temporal authority is concerned with matters altogether different from the gospel. Temporal power does not protect the soul, but with a sword and physical penalties, it protects body and goods from the power of others. So the government has been given the power of the sword, Romans 13, 1 Peter 2, and it takes care of protecting property, going after criminals, so on and so forth. So you have these two different kingdoms. Therefore, the two authorities, the spiritual of the church, the temporal of the government, are not to be mingled or confused. For the spiritual power has its commission to preach the gospel and administer the sacraments. So you're not supposed to blur church and state. Hence, it should not invade the function of the other, or should not set up and depose kings, should not annul temporal laws or undermine obedience to government, should not make or prescribe to temporal power laws concerning worldly manners. They each have their proper function. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute, what happens when one goes after the other? That's a valid question. But when it comes to power, one has the power of the gospel, the other one has the power of the sword. And the, each does not have the other's power. Now, this is the arguments for it. And it's interesting, some of the quotes. Christ himself said, my kingship is not of this world. Absolutely true. Who made me a judge or divider over you. We'll talk about that in a second. Paul also wrote in Philippians, our commonwealth is in heaven. Amen to that. And in 2 Corinthians 10, the weapons of our warfare are not worldly but have divine power to destroy strongholds and every proud obstacle to the knowledge of God. Again, the power is in the gospel. This quote is a most interesting one because this is Luke chapter 12, verse 14. Let me read it to you in context. It's over here. Someone in the crowd said to him, Jesus, teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. In other words, there is a legal dispute uh, between two brothers, a matter of the state. But he, Jesus, said to him, Man, who appointed me a judge or arbiter over you? Now stop and think about that for a second. This is the king of kings, lord of lords. This is, this is the second person, the trinity, incarnate. Yes, he has authority. Yes, he has power. 
he could simply have given a ruling and it would have been true and just and appropriate. However, he does not because our Lord is teaching in the new covenant. His kingdom is not of this world. It's focused on different things. It's not focused on the power of the government and in politics. I know that's very unpopular here this day and age, but that's the basic teaching of two kingdoms theology. Now, yes, it is more complicated than that. Yes, we can have some debates on exactly what happens when one goes astray. But I think if you want a simple, quick, elegant description of two kingdoms theology, the Augsburg Confession, the official teaching of the Lutheran Church, probably does the best job of it. Well, I hope that helps. And always, and as always, Christ's grace and peace to you all. Amen.